Are we ready? Yes, Is we everybody are. on with us? How many are on already? Well, it takes a minute. 8,000? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to first introduce Rachel is our camera girl, our, our uh, uh, website maker, uh, Playson. She does everything. <laughs> she is a, the vice president of everything in her company. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to introduce Mario Montoya, director of operations for HAIR. Director of Hair, That's Artistic true. Division, Jessica, Jessica, the sweet Jessica here, was a former student, a former model of ours, a current salon owner, successfully salon owning, and married and has one, one child, right? Congratulations you. to you. And she has volunteered to come here and be with us today and, and let Mario cut her hair. Great opportunity here hopefully for her. <laughs> now, what we're going to do today is we're going to try to convey a salon environment. And one of the things about being quick and really good in the salon is that you prepare yourself prior to the client getting in. Prior to the client getting in. That's what speed is. So one thing is Mario has his station ready. He knows he's going to be doing a haircut. He has this, the station over here. We shampooed um, Jessica's hair with the almond milk shampoo, the recuperate conditioner he used, and now we're going to go back over here and he's got his, his styling aids prepared along with the sheens and his irons hot, working already, everything's ready to go. She sits down in the chair after being shampooed, we drape her, and now he's going to go through and, and go ahead and, and section off the hair and get her ready to uh, have a haircut and get it done within a, a good period of time. Now Mario can explain the sectioning he's going through, so, if he would. So right now what I'm doing is I'm taking out what's called the parietal ridge. And the parietal ridge, if you use your comb, it'll be able to tell you exactly where it's at. And that's an important bone. So if I'm flat here and I'm flat here, wherever it kind of teeters there, that'll tell you where the occipital bone is. And when you're doing that, you want clean sections. You can see there, I took a clean section, one swipe. One swipe. So on the other side, I'll do the same thing. One clean swipe when you take that hair out. Now, of course, you're going to have a little bit to come back over, but the, the cleaner your sections, the easier your haircut's going to be. And the most important thing is you have a plan. You know what you're going to do. You just don't start cutting into someone's hair and don't have a plan. When you're first starting out or when you're in the salon, if you start to show that you have a plan and your sections are clean, other clients will start to see that and see how clean your work is, and maybe they, one day they might come to you. <clears throat> a lot of the times... Or, their, or their, their kids, or their uh, sister, brother, you know, that's more important. You're not necessarily taking her, them from another, cl another, another client, co-worker, right. but they very well, they have other people involved, and they could be coming to you to get their haircut and their hair services. Uh, so you never know. And you never know who's watching. So at the second point, what I'm gonna do here, this is another important uh, sectioning, is that's where the occipital bone is. If you want the weight to uh, sit a little lower, you take the occipital lower. If you want the weight to sit higher, then you take this first section a little higher. In her case, what I'm gonna do, I, I've known her hairline, and a lot of the times in the salon, you have to look at this hairline. If she's got a really strong hairline, if it's going one way or the other, you have to be aware of that. A lot of times, sometimes when I first started cutting hair, I would just start cutting into it without checking that hairline, and I would run into a mess. So looking at her hairline, it looks soft, it, it kind of lays down, but she always gets this weird cowlick in here. So that's what I'm going to go over today. In the salon, I like to take that out real quick. I don't have to worry about um, sectioning too crazy with this, but I want to just get this hair out and, and think about time. Once I get this out, then I'm going to go in here and just do a disconnection, light disconnection, and I'll show you that in just so one So you're going to do a disconnect where the weight line is. You're not going to blend. No, I'm not going to blend Correct? Today. Correct. Okay. All right, so now Mario is going to go ahead and get started. Now, he's, now mind you folks, he has already discussed this with the client very quickly. Take what, about a minute? Yeah, a minute. Not a lot of time, but if you're prepared and you have everything in your mind what's going to happen, and you're on base with the client, then you can go very, very quickly with this process. Now, speed, that's an interesting thing because speed is not necessarily how fast your hands go. 
Speed is how quickly you're able to make the less moves to be more efficient. So if you're prepared, you have everything laid out, then the moves that you make are there, precise, and done. And uh, that will save you time in your check. So Mario's making his first cut. I'm gonna go ahead and, and take the hair vertically down. Gonna take the next section, direct it out, find the guide, make the cut very quickly. Doesn't have to take a long time. So he's gonna go through this. And now, listen, I also wanna tell you that if any of you have questions about what we're doing, please uh, bring them up on the screen and we'll try and answer them as we go along. And what we're gonna do is show you that, hey, a $50 haircut or a $60 haircut, 30, whatever the price is that you're working at in the salon you're working, it is important that number one, you do a very, very quality work, all right? So we're not gonna give up quality for speed. We're just gonna be efficient with how we do it in order to be uh, quicker. But not giving up quality, never give up quality. So Mario's building the weight, and you can probably see the weight line right there, and he's bringing it on in. And it's very important here, so you guys can understand. Right here, in this you can see where her her um, hair starts to weaken there, and that's why I want to disconnect it because I'm gonna take eventually. I'm gonna take this all out. So don't worry about the end edges when you're doing this. You want to take out that weight. Make sure you tilt the head slightly away from you. We're going to go ahead and take these sections. And now on this side, I was pointing up. This side, I'm going to be pointing down. It's very important that you get your fingers in there and have the client tilt their head. This side is very important when you're working on clients because, look, she already knows how to tilt her head. I've been cutting her hair so long. So if you're here on the client and you're pointing down, you can't get your hand in there. So it's very, very key. Have the client tilt her head here. Let her know that you're going to be doing that. And you'll see here, as I grab that section, you'll see that I now I have area room for my hand here. You have to get that neck turned or you won't be able to get in there and get all that weight out. Now mind you, this is what we're trying to create here is a look of the of a salon environment for you so that you can get the idea of what actually you have to do to make money in a salon. I know when I was uh, in beauty school or starting out in the business, I was so slow, I said, how am I ever gonna make any money? Well, I found out very quickly the ones that made money are very much prepared to, uh, to handle the client quickly, be able to take them right away. I hear this all the time. Let me go get my station ready. That never happens in the salon. Your station is ready as soon as you walk in the door. So what you're going to do is now is go ahead and take the client immediately or as soon as you can. And if you're busy, you need to make sure that you have an opportunity to say something to the client. Hi, how are you? I'll be right with you. You never ignore them and, uh, and hoping that they don't say anything. You might as well be the first one to say that. Clients will say something sometime when you're, when you're running behind. But I gotta tell you, if you're busy, you're, it's gonna happen to you. You just learn how to deal with it, right, Mario? Yeah, absolutely. You can't, you can't, uh, you can't make make any money in this business unless you understand how to do a lot of people, at, you know, in, in succession. The best way to do that is be extremely prepared. Know what you're going to do, go through the process, and do it, and do it efficiently. Do it efficiently. Now he's not moving his hands extremely fast, but he's he's halfway through the back of this haircut. Already done. Alright? So you want to be able to be able to do that. And to do that, you need to practice this. You can't say, I don't want the client. You should be saying, I want the client. I need the client. You need the client. I need it. I need to absolutely have that client in order to get better at what I'm doing and how I can make myself work faster and more efficient. The only way you do it is practice, practice, practice. Isn't that correct, Jessica? That's right. Being a working hairdresser yes. and in your salon, do, don't you don't you seem to, with your clients, you have them ready to go. You're not sitting around wasting a lot of time fixing your station once they get there, right? Right. No. 
No, so you walk thinking. over, you get the client, get them in the shampoo <laughs> bowl, have a little conference with them, and you learn to do this very, very quickly, correct? That's right. And then you go ahead and, and proceed doing the work. Now, this afternoon, just so you guys know, at 1.30 we're going to be doing a color uh, in the, um, <coughs> in right here, on a client of mine, it's $150, $200 service. Mario and I are going to team up and do it. We do, we do that. We're going to do the color and do the cut. And we're going to show you how quickly that can be done. Now, she has short hair, so we're going to go through it very quickly with the weave. Get it done using about 35 or 40 volume peroxide so we can get the color to come up quick. And, uh, and it's a one-process color. It's not bleach. It's a one-process uh, uh, color, right? What it's color a, is it? It's, a it's ten, the Paul Mitchell color. Ten, ten three. It's a ten gold. Ten three and ten gold. Yeah. And it's going to. So we'll be doing that at one thirty our time, also, which you guys can can uh, take a look and come and see it. Now, some of you I know leave early, and if you do that, then uh, you can go back into HanshPro.com and and look at the videos. And you can go back and look at any of these videos. Uh, in the video library page so you want to all this is for your education use it you can slow it down stop it look at the hand position check out what's going on see what heck see what mistakes we might make you know nobody's perfect <laughs> oh Mario's perfect I'm sorry but you can dissect the haircuts and dissect what we're doing and and see exactly how you can actually emulate these things and see how you can make that that all happen for yourself. So, Jessica, how many days you're working part time, right? Yes. How many days a week do you work? Um, three or four. Three or four. That's, that's... We just talked to Jessica about a website that she might be uh, getting put together for herself. Now, I think that's a great thing to have for students. Students should have a website. And uh, by the way, and I know how much money you students get. <laughs> so it might be a good idea to invest in yourself in a website. Start posting your, your work now so that when you do get your license, and I know you all are going to do that, when you do get your license, you're able to go ahead and, and uh, already have a clientele, a portfolio to have a clientele, see exactly what you're doing. So advertise yourself, and that's what we were just talking to Jessica about, and I think that she's going to go ahead and do that. Right, Jess? That's right. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. We want to get her busy, get her busier. She's obviously busy right now, yeah. but we'll get her working five, six days a week, what do you know? <laughs> right? Bring her kids with her. <laughs> Bringing the kids with her. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anybody got any questions? If you do, let me uh, let me answer them. Let me see what I can do. All right, we have Miss uh, Courtney on here. Yep. And Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Hey, Courtney. Courtney Stacy. How are you? Glad to have you, Jacob. Right. Yep. Yep. Jacob. Jacob. Nice to have you, Jacob. Jacob, that's your boyfriend, Jacob. Yes. Yes. He's always. Glad always. to have you, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> He's always supporting, right? Yes. Looks like it's coming along really nice, Mario. Really nice, and, and you're going to get leave that front a little extreme, right? Yeah, what I'm doing right now is I'm leaving this piece out. I always like to leave that, that baby hair out sometimes because that might give me that extra drop. If you see, I can take this out here. This gives me her basic haircut there. Sometimes the client might want that extra drop, a little bit of extra hair, and that kind of saves me from going back or cutting it too short. So I can go over there and extreme it a little more, or I can go in there and clean it back the opposite way. I like to leave that piece there. A lot of times, just that, that difference in length is going to be a little more extreme, and it depends on the client and what the client might like. Now, Jessica is going to be wearing a hairstyle that her clients definitely might want to do, correct? Yeah. So she's showing her work off right now when she's getting her hair cut and, and wearing it in the salon. She's showing her work off, and believe me, they may not want it extreme, they may not want it exactly like this is, but they will respect the fact that it's, it's done and done right, and then uh, 
she will be able to adjust it to the client's needs. Not all clients will want it as long, not all clients will want it as short. But the basic premise of what she's trying to show them is that she's capable of doing it any way they want it. Correct, Jessica? That's right. Right. So here we go. Mario's working now on the left side, taking the hair back down, finding the guy, and now you're overlaying, are you? Or I, just... I disconnected the bottom, so everything is a little longer on top, and it lays on top of that nape area. So I disconnected it, and now I'm just working everything above the parietal ridge right now. Taking everything back to my guy that I have here. <clears throat> everything goes diagonal sections. Anytime you do diagonal sections, thank you, mister. My man is working hard. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's hot in there. It's yeah. Hot. There it's you hot. go. Thank you, mister. He's moving. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you take diagonal sections, and this is very key when you guys are in the salon or if you're uh, practicing. Anytime you take diagonal sections, that's what's going to be, it pushes weight. So as you can see that hair, it starts to flow a little more. If I was to take a vertical section and, and bring it out straight out, the vertical section is going to take out the weight. So anytime vertical sections take out weight, diagonal sections push the weight forward. And I like that in her hair because it's going to blend really well as you'll see in the style. If I was to take a horizontal section, and there's nothing wrong with horizontal, if you guys have someone with fine hair and you're graduating, let me just show you just an example real quick. If you were to take the hair horizontal and graduate it this way, and you could see, I'm very, just a little bit off, just a tiny bit there. I could cross check, never cross cut, but if I was to cut this whole haircut horizontally, that's gonna build weight on her hair. So if she's got fine hair, cutting horizontal will make her hair bigger. So if you have clients out there that have fine hair, if you're gonna layer horizontal or if you're gonna graduate horizontal, know that it's gonna build the weight. So when I'm taking these sections, there's a reason why I'm doing diagonal sections because I want that weight to push forward. Also, if I was to do a hair, a hair color technique on her, if I wanted her hair color technique to show off and push forward, then again, I have to take diagonal sections and hair coloring as well. It's all about how you section and why you're sectioning it that way. Hey, I wanna say hello to uh, Tandra Williamson, hi there. I want to say hello to Star Kelly. You like this haircut. I'm glad to have it. Mario, you got some fans already. Yeah. And Tandra Williamson again. Can't wait to see it. Glad to have you guys with us. <clears throat> now, when you guys are in the salon, it's important that you start to show that haircut off. Look in your mirror. Utilize your mirror when you see the client. Go in here and, and show that haircut and kind of squint your eyes because if, if you're squinting your eyes and you make the client feel like, wow, he's really into my haircut, then she's going to, I'm coming back to this guy, okay? Sometimes I even walk over here and I'll go, and I'll look and I'll make it seem like I'm really watching what I'm doing here. So those are the little key things when you're in the salon, make sure that you're doing. And if you guys are not busy or anything, if you have an assistant or if you have other people in the salon, give her a hand massage or something while she's waiting. Because in the real salon, I think I would have someone giving her a, a polish change maybe in the school if you guys if you guys have a 45 minute color and she's just sitting there waiting for the color to process grab a box of nail polish go up to her and, and shake that nail polish if you make noise inside of a nail polish you know you hear nail polish is moving put it in her hand sit it on her lap let her start looking through the colors even if she doesn't want one everybody in the salon is going to look at that polish and say hey maybe i want one so it's important to upsell all the time Anything? You know, it's great to talk to clients about the kids and everything else, but it's also good to talk about professional hair care for themselves. Because to be honest with you, every one of them, every one of them need it. And they want you, you're the, you're the person that's being advising them. So you can, you can complain about products being sold everywhere else. <coughs> but to be honest with you, if you let them walk out of this, the store, the salon, without recommending at least what they should use, then it's your fault. It's not their fault, it's your fault. And so you want to talk about things that pertain to business and, and your salon. And uh, handing, handing them the polish bottle or handing them the, he was referring to the hair polish, correct? Yeah, or, or nail polish or anything, or the, anything, you know, anything, anything up, up service. Anything that they may, uh, they may be interested in. And you don't want to, you're not going to abuse them. You want to you want to give them the right advice, but I don't think there's a hair in the world that doesn't need help. 
<laughs> I think what Jerry was saying, tangibility is important. So when the client's sitting there, sometimes I'll just put product in her hand. If she asks me questions, the first thing she's going to do is always want to smell it. So she's going to open it, and that's a real quick conversation opener. So she's like, oh, yeah, and, and then I tell gonna, her. And he's going he's he's to tell her, this is what we're going to use on your hair today. <clears throat> and uh, she wanted, how is she going to be able to duplicate it? So we're going we're gonna to educate the client as we cut their hair to be able to duplicate as much as she can. Um, never worry about the client being able to do their hair themselves. They wouldn't be with you <laughs> if they wanted to do it <laughs> right, themselves. Yeah, sure. I can tell you that. I used to have clients uh, every Wednesday night come in to the salon, bring their blow dryer and curling iron, whatever, and teach them how to take care of their hair. Never lost a one of them, not one of them. But I did, was, and we were able, and I'm sure you did the same thing, Mario, they were able to get them to uh, learn how to take care of their hair and get us more clients. <laughs> yeah, and they were for very sure grateful clients. for that. They will help promote you if you treat them well. And the first thing you will do is take good, good care of them in services. You'll take good service care of them. How we how we doing? We got anybody else? Uh, we got oh. come on, you guys. Let's mm -hmm. ask some questions. You guys have any questions? Listen, this will be posted here this afternoon, and then this afternoon when we do the color and cut, then we'll we'll also be posting that one too. And I know it's three thirty in Dallas and uh, four o'clock or four thirty in in. Um, <clears throat> I, I believe in, in uh, hairbenders in, in, Long, in, in Longwood, uh, Florida. So you can also go in later in the evening and actually see what was on uh, on Facebook okay. at honspro.com. Go to videos and you'll, you'll be able to see this very video and, and everything. Now, Mario, what are you doing right now? Right now we're putting in a light touch. Uh, again, I just put a small amount. I usually recommend when you're first doing it in the sizes of a dime, nickel, or a quarter. For her hair, I usually use a nickel size, so I measure it to be a nickel, so you can see it the size of the circle when you put it in your hand. And what does light touch do? Light touch is gonna make her hair dry, really nice and smooth, take care of any frizz. And I really like this product because it's right what it says it does, light touch. It's gonna make her hair feel lighter. It's not gonna be weighing her hair down. It's gonna give her a lot of volume also. Good. That's why I like it. Excellent. And so you're going to use light touch to blow it dry with yes. now? Yes. Sir. Are you going to use any styling I, I glaze or hot? A, I'm going to use a styling glaze today and the, I'm going to get the styling glaze. I like to use a styling glaze more Actually, towards the moisture glaze, which is about the same thing. Or I have the styling glaze. Styling glaze, they let it through. Well, that's styling I, glaze? Yeah. Okay. I, like to, I like to use a styling glaze on her type of hair at the root area. That's just my preference. Um, you can use it all throughout the hair. It's a soft styling gel that you can use all the way through the hair. Don't be afraid of it. And as you can see here, I'm taking sections and I'm taking a little bit out of my palm and just rubbing it right on her root area. That's gonna give her that maximum lift and that bounce that she wants. Styling Glaze is a real light product and I love it because it's not gonna give me troubles blow drying it with a round brush. That's the most important part. So I grab a little more, section her hair off. If you guys, girls can't do this at home, get, get a clip, pick your hair up, get a clip, and go section by section and just do it. I'm not trying to go too fast, but like I said, let me show you slower. Take the section. Would you be working this fast in the salon? Yes, for sure. You know, why would you be working this because fast? Because I got two clients You got waiting. two more clients waiting, <laughs> and you're going to get them out, get her finished up, she be done, and then we're gonna move on to the next client. Right. Cause like I started to tell you a while ago, that when I was a, a fledgling hairdresser, I was wondering, I said, you know, I'm so slow, I will never be able to make any money. As a matter of fact, I made $35 on my first paycheck out of school. I don't mind telling you right now. <laughs> so, I don't want this to be turned out. So. My second paycheck, too. <laughs> so you have, to, you have to develop. You have to. And you, the quicker you can develop in, in the school and get yourself right now moving forward, speed, quality, and customer efficiency, really taking care of the customer, communicating well with the customer. Not only that, guys, when you're in school, in school, you'll get some pretty good tips. And the better you take the care 
of the client, Jessica, I think you can tell me the better they tip. Is that correct? The better they tip the client. Okay. The, the client. better you take care of the client, the better they tip, correct? That's right, yeah. And so you got to count that. I mean, that is money, folks. Does that pay some of your bills, Jessica? Absolutely. So you want to always think, I want good service. I want to do good service for this client, quick and efficient, so that you can have your constant flow. And the, the, the receptionist just came up and said, Mario, your next client's here, and she's waiting for you. I'm ready. And he's ready. <laughs> he's going to finish up here, and the next one will be ready. Yep, I want to say hello to Jessica Navon. Yeah, from Lawton. Huh? From Lawton. From Lawton. Yeah. How you doing, Jessica? Michael Ladd out of Plano in 17. How you doing? A from Lawton with hearts. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, is she doing that for me or Mario? I don't know. We got to ask <laughs> Maybe <her>. both. Huh? <laughs> you know what? I got to do my duties here. Okay. He's, he's starting to sweat again, guys. <laughs> it's so hard to do that. In the salon, I don't now sweat. Now, you can have the receptionist come over and help him do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Hey, we're having fun, and that's what, hairdressing has to be fun. When I was in the salon environment, I had, a, one thing I, lo I loved to go to work every morning because I had a great time. And you can either have a good time or you can have a bad time. And it didn't matter to me. I was going to enjoy my day. And I enjoyed meeting the people, talking to the people. And if I didn't have any clients, I was talking to somebody else's client just to get to know them. I'm not trying to take anybody away. I just want to know them. They need to know who I am. And I would even go help the other the other hairdressers. You need a shampoo? If I'm not busy, let me do it for you. But sooner or later, I'm going to need a shampoo. And I'm going to need some help. And it's called teamwork. And you can get people that you can team up with in the salon and do that. And help you with that. So you always want to be thinking about how can I help improve everything around me and my surroundings. That's going to be the right thing about the program. Now this afternoon, <laughs> this afternoon, Mario's going to be, I'm going to be helping him do the weave and he's going to be making sure we get that done. We're going to show you how quickly that can be done. It's at 1.30 this afternoon. How quickly, 1.30 Phoenix time, it's uh, 3.30 uh, Dallas time and it is 4.30 in, uh, in Florida time. So, and like I said, if you, I know moms have to get out, sometimes they'll pick up the kids, whatever, but you can always look at this later. And that's what we're building. We're building that library so you can go back free of charge and look at it and, and see what's going on. You just go to the website and you can go see any of them and all of them. Now, yesterday, Right, Rachel? We yes. had a great time yesterday with your girls. Yes. Rachel has two beautiful girls, and they had great, great long hair. Mm -hmm. Beautiful long hair, and Mario cut it for them, just trimmed it off just like a client would. And one went to about shoulder length, that's kind of curly hair, that's the younger one. She wanted to shave it. She wanted, to, <laughs> she wanted a mohawk. But we didn't. Mom was not going for it. So, at 10 years old, it wasn't going to happen. So, but sooner or later, she's going to, she's a, she's a wild one. She wanted purple hair and all that, the whole the whole ball of wax. Yeah, she might be a cosmetology student. Yeah, she might be. <laughs> she just yeah. might be. So, we did her hair and showed how we can work with the products to accentuate the curl. And, and, the, uh, and the other young lady was, what's her Lexi. Lexi. She had hair clear down the middle of her back. And man, when we got done with it, if you go and look at look online, you can see what we did with their hair and how beautiful it really came out. So, Andrea just hopped on. Hi, Andrea. She's from Perth. Andrea, nice to have you with us. Thank you for, for dialing in. I hope huh? your kids are watching. I know. We're going to get them on it. And then Mesquite is also on. Mesquite, all right. All my good friends over there, Shelly and Kim, and all the, all the great, know, great instructors. Glad to have you guys with us. Hope you're enjoying this. If you just came on, you can go back and watch this on the Hans Pro website. Just go to HansPro.com, go into it, 
look for videos and, and you'll see it coming up right now. Share, yeah. share something with them real quick. When you guys are in the salon also, and you have your client here, and that, that cord, if you're hitting the client with a cord, that's not professional. So when I have that happening at the salon's pack, what you need to do is you need to wrap that cord around your arm. Okay, so that allows you that way that gives it that space. And you can see this. It allows you to control it. Right. If you don't wrap that, and I'm here, and always hit the client, you don't want to do that. So make sure that you wrap your arm around that, that cord there, and that'll give you the flexibility to and it's more professional for the client. Hey, listen, I noticed one other thing. He's never put the blow dryer down. He's never turned it off. He doesn't put the br br brush jam. You learn to work with two hands to control the hair to do what you want to do. That's a good point. I Seldom do you ever put any of these tools down. When you put them down, that costs you time. Let me explain that with Jerry also. That's a good Go ahead. Point. Go ahead, Jerry. Mario. All the time I see this in the uh, salons, they put the brush down. You grab your clip, you pick up the brush again, you do your section, you put the brush right down, pick up your section. That right there, you have to start to learn in the salon to never put this down. That's a great point, Jerry, and never uh, use clips. Try to utilize that hair. And let me show you real quick how you do that. If you have the hair and you need to do it in sections, take that section out, section out the hair that you need to, to blow dry, and I'll pretend that the blow dryer is on. You do your section, Okay, once you're done with that section, you let it cool, and then you take another section. Grab that section right there. That's very important. I'm not grabbing that bottom hair. A lot of times when you're in the school and you're in the salon and you're practicing, you pick up that second section, and then you start to grab that other hair, and that's what you get. So that's a very, very important thing, Jerry, not to put the blow dryer down. Yeah, you don't put, it, you don't put the tools down. Hair is like plastic. You heat it up, you can bend it to where you want to bend it to. And he's going to use... The flat iron, is that not right? It's a little, I don't need a lot. You don't need a whole lot, he's just gonna have to help bend it. So what he's doing right now, he's gonna get the hair going in the direction it wants to go, and then he'll come back, check the haircut. I know he's gonna check the haircut, but you gotta go back and, and, and adjust. But that's a complete haircut is when you actually check the haircut. You cannot do haircut and not check it. It's just that simple. So now he's gonna go through Look at that beautiful hair, Jessica. Mm -hmm. What a great look. That's a great look. Love that. Love it. Love it. So directors, all of you directors, get your students on online. Get them to go in. Take a look at what's going on. Take a look at what we've done. And let's see where we're at. Now he's going to go ahead and clean up all of this. Did you see those marks in the hair? He's going to take some of those out. Well, I'm adjusting the hairline also. Look at the coloring, the dark hair underneath, the blonde overlay. I mean, it's a, it's a great look. Now, Jessica is going to go back in her salon, and I can guarantee you she'll have customers ask her for this haircut. Right, Jessica? They sure will. So, Jessica, you <laughs> they can sure go. will. <laughs> they sure will. What was you the can, answer? You can go. You can go on Hanspro.com and see your hair being cut. Right? Yeah. Jerry, explain All this right. right here. Just what I'm doing here. So you. Um, when you guys have that extra hair underneath, some people don't like to get the shaver out. Um, you can bring that hair up off that hairline and go small circles and practice this before you do it. I recommend it. And what I'm doing is small circles. I take that. A little bit of extra hair out there. So that makes that hairline fall a little better for me. Okay. I recommend when you guys are doing this, work back from the, the point, your weak point here. If you work backwards this way, sometimes if you push the hair that way, it makes the hair longer. So I like to work backwards. Let me just get that guy there first and then work your way backwards. Small point cutting. Now you see all this right in here. He's going to go in and texture this out all through in here to where it blends more. You don't have to be perfect, but you need to have it just take those lines out. Right, Mario? Yes, I will. Right. I'll show him how to use the texturizing see, machine. Just if he decide. wasn't going to do it, he's going to do it now. Because <laughs> he told me <laughs> Let to, me right? get that brow, baby. He is working hard for you guys. <laughs> Hi, Tanya. Uh, from Plano. She hopped on as well. 
Who is that? Tanya from... Uh, Tanya? Yeah. Oh, Tanya Thompson. Oh, yeah, and our sweetheart, Tanya. How you doing? How's everything going, Tanya? I know you had a, a, a NACUS inspection yesterday, and you guys did wonderful. Wonderful. That looks good. That neck looks really nice. Okay. When you guys are on the sides here, I left that extra piece there again, just for safety reasons. I can bring this all back now. I'm good with the length. Tilt the head as far as you can. Make sure her shoulders go and sit all the way up. So now, there you go. Make sure the client's sitting all the way up. Tilt that head. If you're not tilting that head, you're not getting the, get the haircut that you want as clean as you want. And get that extra piece right there. And that looks pretty good to me for just doing a salon speed here. We want to point cut that out. And that's how you want to finish that out, just on that side there. Now, when I come around in the schools, I can tell you I do not want to see people setting their tools down. I want to see a station set up. I want to see him taking the client immediately, immediately. Not I got to go get my station ready, and 15 minutes later, you while the client's sitting there, you're looking. That's going to stop happening. Teachers, you make sure that that stops happening right now, and we start getting real customer service. It's all about servicing the customer. I can tell you that I've seen a lot of great hairdressers, and I've seen some great hairdressers that couldn't make money if their life depended on it because they did not. They weren't friendly, they didn't take good care of the client. And I've seen some hairdressers that were just pretty good. Make tons of money. Yeah. Tons of money. There because is. they liked the client. The client oh liked there. them. And that's the first number one rule is you always want to back up your great service with great work. But you all also have to have great service and, and great attitude with the client. It goes a long long way so we have hill christy on hello who's that right here starts from right here you can go down hi H hill christy yeah i think her first name's christy I love, <laughs> I love that haircut yes you do well, let's get it let's cut it <laughs> yeah. and then jessica says that she loves you and mario all right <laughs> thank you so much jessica thank you Mario's working hard today. We, we, our whole purpose today is to really try to bring the salon environment to you so you really see what has to happen. Now, we're it, probably Mario would have been done already, but we're not, we're not 30 minutes into this haircut. Did we start about 9.15? Uh, yes. So it's, it's 9.48 right now, and he is getting close to being done. Well, close. With, maybe with the texturizing shears. Yeah, is that what you're working with right yeah. now? Right now, I want to explain to you guys when you do the texture I use here, if I could see this a little bit of weight. I, I like to go in there vertically first. I've seen Jerry go in there horizontally, and he's a little more skilled than I am when he does it horizontally. Man. No, come he, on. That, that comes out come really, on. really nice. Come on, now you count your brow again, man. <laughs> that comes out. I'm over a short sleeve. We're in Arizona, by the way, and these yeah. lights aren't helping you. It's okay, awesome. so. <laughs> I, I, I tend to go in there. Can you believe he said that? Vertically. I, said that. I go in here vertically. Make sure that you guys are parallel to the hair. I never go closer than two inches. And make sure, like I said, parallel. If she doesn't need it, what I'll do is I'll knock it out where I don't need it. And where she does need it, I'll hit it a little bit there. Never go in horizontal and go like this because it's going to make a line in it. Everybody texturizes different. Try it. Try different pair of shears out. Try your actual shears. If you don't know how to do everything with these, don't pick up other shears. You should be practicing with these also. So let me show you. I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to take out just that little bit of weight underneath. And that helps. Tell them how much you're not closing those shears. And I'm not closing at all. I'm, okay. What I'm doing is, yeah, don't do this at home <laughs> until you I'll practice. I'll be, be dealing with them. <laughs> so as you go, you barely, as Jerry said, barely close. You can see my thumb barely move. You see the thumb barely move. So as I go in, it's I'm really just... really using the blades to... To cut the hair, right. it's not even closing the blades, and it just kind of takes that extra hair. You don't up there. go all the way through the, the top, the top ever, because you try not to leave any any little ones coming through. And you need a good pair of scissors for there's that. There's always right? there's so many different techniques. Yeah. A lot of times you got to look at them, you got to see what's yours to work, and how you can best work with it. There's no wrong way to do things. There's only the right way to get the result. And then if you need a good pair of shears, so you go on Hans Pro. Dot com. We have shears on there that you guys start practicing. This is the ones I'm using here now. Oh, Casio shears are phenomenal shears. You That's can see the the, the 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 sharpness of them that takes that hair right out. Yeah. Again, you have to practice, Jerry. So you must practice. Don't go in there. Oh. 
do it right away, you might take all that hair piece off it after that beautiful haircut. I would suggest that you guys take some of that money that you get and invest in yourself. Invest in a website so you can start getting promoting yourself. Invest in some good tools. That would be a good thing. Casio is one of the best in terms of the tools and how well they, uh, they work and they have a good array of them. They have them anywhere from $600 to $1,300. I'm not suggesting you run out and buy thirteen hundred dollars shares. This is important too. Yeah, I agree with you. You got to start off slow. I, this is a very important thing. Also, what I do with these types of haircuts, you take everything in that Pridal Ridge out. With her hair, um, I know her hair very well. It starts to gather there. I like to come in here. I can layer that out, or I like to do it in tiers. So watch how I do this. This is really, really important. You take two different tiers. One, two. I like to grab this hair here at a small triangle, bring it up. And you can show it right here. Bring that hair up, and it's almost like you're disconnecting it, and you're taking that corner weight out. And I like to take that weight out right there. And just because I know her hair really well, I like to take that weight out. And then release it. And that takes that big ear. She had like an ear muff back there. So let's bring it, that it up. It especially shows up when you have different uh, shades of hair. And so that's what you wanna, wanna actually, it could be cut very even, but it'll look like it's uh, disconnected too much. So you want to, what he's doing right now is softening the edge. You're just softening the edge so you have a better, a better understanding of just what that hair is going to do. And it and allows it to get show some more volume also there, as you can see there. Okay. I'm gonna do that. Texturizing, I'm going there too. You could also go in there with the texturizing shears and and do like he's doing right now now you're taking that that rough edge out too so we want to show you as many techniques as we possibly can notice he's not putting the shears down come on you guys if you practice <laughs> this you be ambidextrous so you can use both hands and you guys can get this thing done very very easily pearl hey my good buddy pearl out there how you doing Glad to have you with us. Anybody got any questions? You, we must have explained it very well because I haven't yeah, had any questions from great. anybody yeah. yet. <laughs> Mario's done a great job. And we're and like I said, we're not, and probably he would have already been done had we not been doing this very same thing here. This filming. It takes a little more time. I especially want to thank Jessica for being the model. Glad to have. Maybe we need to come over to Jessica's salon <laughs> and, 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 and do life. some filming sometime. What do you think, Jessica? Oh, you're more than welcome to. Yeah. I just invited myself. I guess. Like, huh? You can see how I got rid of most of that. We watched there. Jessica do some work, and she can see how, you know, real salon hairdressers do real work. In in, in reality. Mario and myself are both real salon hairdressers, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> That's where we have worked the hardest and done the most and for the longest time. So, and Jessica, I'd like to highlight you sometime. That would be great if you yeah. want to. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, he's piddling around no, now. Good. Good. Yeah. So we need to go ahead and see what your client's waiting. All way. right, so let's just get so, make this you know you don't want to overdo it. Let's let's make this thing work. <laughs> All right, let's get a little hairspray in here. <laughs> We're on a time frame here. I got you, you know, you guys, they tell me that I take too long when I do one of these. I was just and uh, maybe I do, maybe I do, but I don't care. If you go ahead and look at my videos, you can see it. You're going to see every single thing. Same thing with Mario. He's going to show you every single thing we can possibly show you. So, I know you can't always watch it for as long as we're on, but uh, go back and look at it. We had, in the last one we did in Roswell, we had over 5,000 views. Yes. So, people are still going back to that video. Yes. So, use it. Use it. What we're doing right now is using disciplined hairspray. It's a firm hairspray. And he's just t teasing it up a little bit. And then putting some spray on it to give it some, some crunch. I don't think you use the iron much, huh? No. 
we're going to leave her like this. <laughs> I don't think Jessica's going to do that in the morning. <laughs> I bet you, is that what you do in the morning? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny, Mr. Do you go do this in the morning? <laughs> I just want to take it for a while. Or so, we're good. so we've used light touch. Yes, sir. We use the uh, styling glaze. We use the discipline hairspray. And we're going to use the uh, expressive, what is this? This is the shining example. Shining example. Because I didn't have my glasses on. So we'll probably do a little bit of sheen over it too, right? Yep, just a tiny bit. And then we use almond milk shampoo and recovery. Shining. So um, know your products, use them, and make it all happen. Make it happen, I'll get it happen. Sorry. That's what an assistant does, by the way. <laughs> I'll be assisting Jerry later, so no. <laughs> yeah. His cap's going everywhere. He did another one. I mean, that's good. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to sweep up the hair because we don't want anybody slipping and sliding around on the floor. So I'm going to start getting that out of the way. So when you're not busy and one of your fellow students is in there working and they got hair all over everywhere, before somebody slips and falls, get in there and work with them. Get in there and help them. Help them get that place cleaned up so you can get on to the next client. That's what you want to do. Team up. And then if they don't want to help you next time, <laughs> find somebody else to team up with. <laughs> they will. They will. When they're busy and you help, they will definitely want to help you to return the favor. What a beautiful haircut. Jessica, you look gorgeous. You look absolutely gorgeous. Take, take a look around. You got the mirror? I do not right now. No, you can do it. It's, just, it's your thing. Go ahead. You can go ahead and let the client. Anytime you have it, sometimes the clients may or may not feel comfortable the way you style it. And it's okay for let, to let them put their hands through it and play with it because you got to let them personalize it as well too. And I suggest after every client in the salon when she's done, you want to go in there and you want to give her a light makeup touch up because whatever I might have shampooed off of her off of her hairline there, give them a light makeup touch up, give them a little bit of lip gloss and rebook, rebook, yes I did. And rebook, make sure you rebook the client right after she's done. Rebook her, you know, when you're in a dentist's office or you're at the doctor's, you rebook your appointment. Same thing with hairdressing. You want to make sure that they rebook that appointment. And a before and after picture. You yes. You always need to do a before and after so you guys can put it on your Instagram or your website. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And we didn't take a before picture. We have it on yes. the film. film. But uh, here we go with this beautiful haircut she just right, got. She's ready to walk out. That'll be $65. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're ready to go. All right, we're good, I think. All right, All Jessica. Right. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. And we took about how long? Uh, about 45 minutes. That's a good time. About 45 minutes, start to finish. And, and that was long. a lot of talking and stopping. Yeah. But believe me, probably could have done it in 30 minutes. Yeah, you should be booked in the salon every 15 minutes, every 20 minutes in the salon. You should be rebooked. We'll tell them we book every half an hour. Every half hour. Okay, okay every half hour in the salon. <laughs> okay, until you get to a speed. Any up. questions, you guys? Any questions at all? Now is the time to ask them. And if you have them for later on this afternoon, we'll be able yes. to do that. 1.30 this afternoon, we're going to be doing the, the weave on, yeah. on my good customer, Mary Lynn Bell, Mary Lee Bell, right. and uh, she, it's about a $150 job, and we're going to have it done in about an yeah, hour. So today, Jerry and I would have made about $215, yeah. $215 yeah. so far. We only done two clients. <laughs> so <laughs> we split. So yeah. we still, we're going to split. <laughs> right, right. I don't get nothing, I can tell you that. <laughs> Jessica, thanks so much. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. you know, look forward to seeing you at your salon. Yeah. You're going to get, figure out, well, you can do something so we can come show everybody, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you tell us when, we'll be over there filming for you. And, 
get everything. Because all my kids, all my Jerry's kids over here, would love to see this work. Mm -hmm. All right? You guys enjoying this? I'm yes. asking questions so somebody answers something. <laughs> ask him. We're all, all right. done? Yeah, we're all done. And okay. we'll check it. Um, Any questions? Yeah, we'll check it in case they have questions after. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Bye, guys. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs>